Everyone loves a good story and a good storyteller. But there is no storyteller like the Lord Jesus, and there are no greater stories told than the ones Jesus shared. In this study, Spiritual Stories, we consider the parables Jesus told and their application to us. These are truly the greatest stories ever told, and the Lord has something He wants to say to you through them. Let's join Scott Pauley now. There is something wonderful about things when they are brand new, when they are fresh and they work properly. Uh, They're not old and run down and cracked and torn and worn. Uh, May I just say to you that we serve a God who makes all things new. This is the great lesson we come to today in the parable of Jesus in Matthew chapter 9. In fact, there are two verses here. Uh, Each of them gives us a picture, and the two pictures form the one parable. Let me read it to you. Matthew chapter 9, verse 16, Jesus said, No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish, but they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Now, these two verses, Matthew 9, verse 16 and 17, are paralleled in Mark chapter 2 and in Luke chapter 5. You can read these exact same thoughts recorded by three different gospel writers and compare Scripture with Scripture. Uh, but what's the point? What is what is Jesus saying in this parable? He's he's talking to us about when the old becomes new. Now, uh, in our world, with men, new things become old. It deteriorates. That's what sin does. The world winds down. Life uh, begins to decay. The body begins to fall apart. The new becomes old. Oh, but with the Lord, the old becomes new. The Lord takes what is old and torn and broken and makes it over again. Only God can do that. Only the God who who is the creator can be the, the one who gives the new creation, the recreator, to make all things new. So uh, what do we learn from this parable? Well, first of all, the primary interpretation. The primary interpretation, remember, Jesus was speaking to religious people, people that knew the Old Testament scriptures, who had followed the the old ways and the religious formality of Judaism. And Jesus is basically saying to them, I didn't come to make the old a little better. I came to make it over. You see, they were looking at him as a rabbi and thinking, oh, this man's a good speaker, and he can work miracles too. Well, maybe he'll really add a lot to what we already have. And I love this. Jesus said, no, no, I didn't come uh, just to make your your experience a little better. I didn't come uh, just to make the old a little better. I came to make it all over again. And that's the point of these two pictures. Uh, The first is the picture of a garment that has a tear in it. And he said, you don't take a piece of new cloth and sew it on to an old, worn-out garment because when you do, after a while, uh, the new begins to separate from the old and the tear actually gets worse than it was at the beginning. May I just say to you, when you just try to do a patchwork job and and cover over uh, the the tear, the the hole, uh, you try to to reform yourself a little bit, in the end, it's, it's much worse because you can't make yourself in what God can make you. And then the second picture, he said uh, in that day they would they would use goat skin and uh, they would use these goat skin vessels to hold wine, to hold the fruit of the vine. And over time, uh, they get cracked. They get worn out. He said, you start putting new wine, good uh, grape juice into those old vessels And the crack is just going to get worse. No, you need new vessels. You don't need the old. You need the new. 
And so this is the primary interpretation. What's the revelation about God? Remember, it's not first about us. All scripture first is about God himself. Uh, So what is the great revelation about God? It is this, that only God can make us new. And in the end, praise God, read the book of Revelation. In the end, he's going to make all things new. Uh, But he works in us even now. This is why Jesus came. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. There's a whole world of people who are trying through through religion and through personal reformation, through being moral, getting nasty things out of their life and trying to do good things uh, to make life better. But all you're doing is making the tear worse. All you're doing is making the crack in the vessel worse. All you're doing is preparing yourself more readily for eternal judgment because there is no way you can measure up. You cannot make yourself new again. Oh, but God can. Yes, he can. This is what the new birth is. It's the great difference between reformation and regeneration. What is regeneration? Literally to be regened, uh, to be given a new nature, to be placed into the family of God and, and his very life to be placed in your heart. Oh, my friend, You don't need more religion. You need Jesus. You don't need to do better at the old way. You need the new life that only comes through Jesus Christ. And so it brings us not only to the primary interpretation and the divine revelation, but to the practical application. May I tell you today, stop trying to patch up your old self. Stop trying to make yourself more suitable for public consumption and please everybody. Stop trying to appease your conscience. Stop it. Stop trying to, to get God to put his, his good wine, his, his beautiful joy and Holy Spirit into, into that old religious form that you want to hold on to and instead say to the Lord, Lord, I can't, but you can. By the way, he not only can, he will. That's why Jesus came. Remember, this is early in the earthly ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was saying to them from the very outset, I didn't come to be another rabbi. I didn't come to make Judaism a little better. I came to reveal God's truth, and I came to show you God's way to bring new life. That's why, if you fast forward to the end of the earthly ministry of our Lord Jesus, when they crucified him, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top, to the bottom. God did that, not from bottom to top, top to bottom. Uh, God said, we don't need this anymore. The way is now made into the holiest of all. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You don't earn God's favor, and you don't make your way to heaven uh, through keeping rules and checking boxes and uh, fulfilling all the religious requirements of some group. You come to God through simple repentance and faith in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you do, he will do for you what you could never do for yourself. And he will do for you what no other man could ever do for you. I love this word. Jesus said, no man. No man does this. No man does this. God is the one who is at work. And he uses a story from everyday life. Isn't that wonderful? Something we can understand. Something we can all get to teach us something that is supernatural, that only God can do. Friend, my God is the God that someday is going to make everything new. There'll be a new heaven, a new earth, and a new Jerusalem. He'll make all things new someday. Aren't you looking forward to that? But he wants to make you new today. You can be a new creature in Jesus Christ. You can have new life. You can have a new start, a new beginning with the Lord today by simply coming to Jesus Christ. Would you call on him right now? Would you you trust him right now? And you will find that Christ is the one who takes the old and makes it new. The parables of the Lord Jesus Christ hold tremendous truth and application to us today. And to help you in this study, we encourage you to visit our website, enjoyingthejourney.org where Scott has prepared a reading guide to the parables that you can download and use. On our website, you will find many helpful tools and resources to help you in your walk with the Lord. Every sermon, each study, all of our resources are for the purpose of following God's Word and finding Christ's joy.